So in this screencast, we'll continue our discussion of the programming language L, uh, the formalism, computational formalism developed um, in the second chapter of Computability, Complexity, and Languages by uh, Davis, uh, Waker, and Seagal. Uh, and in this screencast, we'll uh, focus on uh, computing successor snapshots. So uh, specifically, uh, we will be uh, defining the function uh, successor um, that takes um, uh, as its argument uh, a snapshot uh, i sigma if you're not familiar uh, with what a snapshot is you may want to watch uh, the previous uh, screencast on this channel um, uh, about the programming language l um, and uh, um, where we uh, have defined uh, program states and snapshots formally so we take the uh, snapshot um, uh, i sigma um, the current snapshot i is the inst uh, instruction of uh, the number of the instruction in the L program about to be executed um, and uh, Sigma is a program state uh, the state of that program uh, and uh, so this is the current snapshot and we compute the successor snapshot J tau um, uh, which is um, okay we're gonna call it next uh, this is next uh, next snapshot or the successor snapshot so J is the next instruction to be executed uh, or possibly um, on uh, you know the terminal snapshot uh, the instruction um, uh, the number uh, after the last instruction of the uh, program and tau is the next state which is possibly equal to um, uh, Sigma uh, because we may not make any changes in the program state by executing the ith instruction so let's suppose that we have um, uh, this uh, program uh, p uh, and uh, so what we're after is a well-defined uh, sequence of uh, snapshots uh, that's why we're defining the successor function so let's start with uh, snapshot one uh, snapshot two and then all the way to some snapshot uh, n and uh, uh, every subsequent um, um, uh, snapshot is the successor of the previous snapshot. So this is a well-defined sequence of snapshots where we can uh, obtain uh, the next one from the previous one. So let's remind ourselves um, a, um, of the four basic uh, instructions in the programming language L. So every uh, program in L, um, even if uh, it has macros, uh, can be compiled eventually uh, down to these four types of instruction, uh, instructions. Uh, so one, uh, the first type is uh, the, uh, the increment, uh, v arrow v plus one, the value of v is incremented by one. The second type is uh, v arrow v minus one, the value of v uh, is decremented by one, where v is a legal variable uh, in the text of the program. Uh, 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 p. Uh, then uh, the third case uh, is the easiest one. It's a no op uh, v arrow uh, v. Uh, the value of v is assigned to itself or remains uh, the same. And then the fourth case is the conditional dispatch. If the value of v is not equal to zero, then uh, go to um, uh, go to some uh, label l, where l is a legal label. Um, uh, again, watch the previous screencast on this channel um, uh, to familiarize, uh, familiarize yourself with uh, um, uh, with uh, uh, what's uh, what are the legal variables and labels and uh, the syntax of, of of L. Okay, so obviously the value of the successor will depend on the type of instruction, right? The uh, uh, the ith instruction that we're about to execute. So there are four cases. So if in the first case the uh, ith instruction um, is of the form v arrow v uh, plus one. So since sigma is the legal state of the uh, program, uh, it must contain uh, the equation that describes the current value of v. So it contains uh, v equals to m, where m is some natural number. Remember that we're computing only on natural numbers. And uh, uh, then uh, in, uh, in that case, um, uh, what do we do? Well, we go to the next instruction uh, after the ith instruction. So the value of j in the successor snapshot is equal to uh, i plus 1. That's the instruction that follows uh, the ith instruction. And uh, uh, sigma uh, is um, uh, 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 rather tau. Tau is the same as sigma. Uh, except for uh, one equation. Uh, so the equation of uh, uh, for m, uh, v equals m, uh, must be replaced with v equals uh, m plus 1. So this vm, uh, right, this equation, uh, v equals m. 
is replaced uh, is replaced with the equation um, uh, v um, uh, equals m plus one. So we executed the ith instruction. Uh, we have uh, uh, incremented the value of uh, v by one, and uh, the new state tau in the successive snapshot uh, must reflect that change. So v is equal to m plus one now. Okay, so that's case one. So we've figured out what happens uh, in uh, in the first case. In the second case, uh, the value of uh, uh, sorry, rather the ith instruction is of the form. Uh, um, uh, v arrow v minus 1. So we will have to increment the value of v uh, by 1. And uh, again, sigma uh, must contain uh, the, val uh, the, the equation describing the current value of uh, v. So v, uh, is equal to, uh, v is equal to m, uh, some, uh, some value. And uh, um, uh, this is a little bit more interesting than uh, the increment in the sense that uh, the value of the uh, tau uh, depends on uh, this value of m. If m is equal to zero, we cannot uh, go negative because we're, we have to stay in the uh, domain of natural numbers. Uh, so then um, uh, j uh, is equal to i plus one. Well, we uh, have to go to the next instruction after uh, instruction number i um, uh, and uh, sigma remains um, uh, 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 rather tau uh, tau remains the same uh, as sigma so there are no changes so we cannot have the negative number so 0 minus 1 for all practical purposes is equal to 0 if m on the other hand is uh, a positive natural number then uh, uh, j uh, is the next instruction uh, following i, uh, instruction number i, and uh, tau uh, is um, uh, the same as sigma except that uh, the uh, instruction um, uh, describing the current value of uh, m, uh, v equals m, will have to be replaced uh, by the instruction v equals m minus 1. So we've executed the increment. Uh, and um, uh, must uh, reflect the change in the uh, next uh, snapshot uh, that consists of the number of the next instruction to be executed plus uh, the new program state tau. So in the tau, uh, v equals m is replaced with uh, v equals m minus 1. Okay, case number 3 is the easiest one. Um, uh, so there's a no op, nothing changes. So we simply uh, go to the next instruction. Mm, I um, uh, rather j is equal to uh, i plus one, and tau uh, tau uh, tau will remain uh, the same, same as sigma, and uh, uh, j will be okay. Except uh, j is equal to um, uh, i plus one. Okay, so um, I've run out of um, white space, so let me grab some white space and we'll continue with um, uh, the fourth case, which is the uh, next instruction being the conditional dispatch. So I'll, let me erase all of it. Okay, um, so the successor, um, all right, so f uh, case number four, uh, instruction number I is of the form if v um, is not equal to um, a zero, then go to L, where L is um, some legal label of the programming language L. Um, so several subcases. Um, so for a uh, sigma in in this case. Uh, contains the uh, equation v equals zero. So in other words, the current value of v is equal to zero. In that case, um, uh, the condition will just fall through. It's not going to be. It's, it's not going to be true. This condition is not going to be true. And well, what what happens in this case? Uh, well, uh, we simply go to the next instruction after instruction number i. So j will be equal to i plus one, and uh, uh, tau will be equal to sigma. 
Uh, so, I mean, tau will be equal to sigma regardless of whether the dispatch happens or not because we're not modifying anything. And um, in the second case, right, B, for B, um, uh, sigma contains um, uh, the, uh, the equation of uh, uh, V equals to, um, equals to M, where M is uh, a natural number uh, greater than zero. So what happens in this case? Well, in, in, in this case, um, this will be uh, true. V is not equal to zero, so the dispatch must happen, so we have to go to L. And uh, in this case, J uh, is the least number um, the least number such that um, the Jth instruction has that label L, is labeled with L. Right, so if you you can go and watch our uh, previous screencasts about the syntax of uh, the programming language uh, L and um, um, uh, right labeled instructions have uh, uh, labels uh, to the um, to the left, right? So they they they, they have labels. Uh, L may have labeled instructions. Um, so um, so and in this case, uh, J is defined to be the least number such that the Jth instruction of P is labeled with L, right? Why is that? Well, because um, uh, the formal specification of uh, L um, does not preclude um, uh, a programming language L using the same label uh, more than once. So we can imagine a situation where there's this instruction labeled L and there's another instruction labeled L. And so if we go to L, all right, if, if, if uh, there is a dispatch, go, go to L, then we're going to uh, go to the... Uh, well, earliest uh, instruction, if you will, uh, that has L, right? And the earliest means that, okay, J is the least number such that the Jth instruction of P uh, is labeled with L. So, um, uh, um, on the other hand, uh, there can be the case that uh, L is a legal label, but it's not used anywhere in the program. Uh, that can also happen, and if no instruction is labeled uh, with L, uh, we go to um, a J, right? J will be equal to n plus one. So uh, n plus one uh, is n is the number of instructions. Remember in uh, in our program P, and uh, n plus one uh, is uh, the number um, uh, following the last instruction of, uh, of, of 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 P. So um, so two cases. So either. Um, if we do have uh, an instruction uh, labeled uh, L, then um, uh, J is, is equal to the least number, uh, such that the Jth instruction uh, of P is labeled with L, and tau is sigma, or J is equal to n plus 1, uh, and tau is equal to sigma. So essentially we terminate. It's a terminal.